Do light-skinned people always get better treatment? Not according to the formerly enslaved Moses Roper. But before I get into his story, let's talk about how some white people felt about light-skinned black people prior to emancipation. So pause to read, but this is a story about how a white man thought that the light-skinned people were like mules and hard to train and dark-skinned people were worthy of respect because they had aristocratic blood. This lady talks about how she loves being black and shares her experience. Now let's get back to Moses. Pause to read, but Moses' life starts off traumatic. His enslaver wanted to unalive him because he came out too light-skinned. Grandmother saves him but the family is separated as a punishment. They're having a hard time finding an enslaver for Moses because he's so light-skinned. But eventually he gets enslaved by Mr. Gooch who has him working as a field negro and from there on out he is treated horribly. He's experiencing every horrible thing you can imagine. His life was always in danger. So when I see someone say that the horrors of the black experience no longer apply when someone is light-skinned, Think of how many black Americans like Moses Roper experienced what he experienced that we'll never know about. Why do people think being light skin is a flex? So people put light skin on such a high pedestal that if somebody calls themselves light skin who is light skin, they're called, oh, you think you're better than us? Or, or we trigger somebody by saying that and they'll hit us with you're not even that light skin if you're not like a white person's complexion you can't you can only be light skin if you're a white person's complexion if you're not that you're dark skin like i understand i mean i love my caramel complexion i really do but the obnoxiousness of it all is just extra like i can call myself light skin if i want to i could call myself a red bone if i want to that's my experience. People always call me that. Like it's my name. So I shouldn't have to feel bad or avoid calling myself light skin to stop making people seem like I'm being stuck up or something. Calling myself brown skin when I'm lighter than that. So people don't think I'm trying to flex. Like it absolutely makes no sense. It's a skin complexion and I get colorism and everything but everything that i feel like people say is like colorism isn't colorism in most situations but it's such a sensitive issue that we have to walk on eggshells with the topic like we, we we can't even talk about our side of the conversation apparently light skin is a trigger word calling yourself light skin triggers people <clears throat> calling yourself light skin triggers people putting red cutie in your instagram uh what's the username is gonna trigger people and make people call you colorist when you're just describing yourself i remember when i was younger calling myself brown skin because i didn't feel right calling myself light skin even though i knew i was but i i felt like if i were to call myself light skin that people would because i already had social anxiety so i already was worried about how people was judging me anyway and so if i felt like if i were to say i was if i like if i describe myself and i say i'm light-skinned i feel like people would be like you're not even that light-skinned or like they'll think things of me that ain't true just because i i i described how i look my skin color is light skin but people make it seem like that's a cuss word or like you're gonna you have to call yourself brown skin just to make people not feel bad it's so like for what for what i'm so glad to be on the opposite end of unhealed like i'm i love being healed because you it's like hindsight 2020 you start to see things in a whole different way i wish i would have did things different when i was younger and i wish I knew what colorism was when I was younger because I didn't understand a lot of this stuff but somehow I knew at a young age that if I called myself light skin people would think I'm stuck up and stuff I don't know I didn't grow up with colorism in the household I well my mom kind of was planting seeds every now and then about it because I honestly think my mom is a low-key colorist because my father used to cheat on my mom with lighter skinned women and she told me this as an adult she told me that but I always you know thinking back yeah she did have issues with light skinned women at growing up and I'm light skinned and me and her didn't never get along like ever like we still don't get along but I remember one time we was living in Okinawa Japan and we was at Pizza Hut 
on base. They had a, a base called Camp Foster. So I remember in Okinawa, Japan, me and my mom, we were at Pizza Hut on base. And we had a conversation about when I was a baby. Because, because I was born with jaundice. So I came out like really high yellow. And they had to put me in a machine to make my skin color come in and everything. But I remember my mom, while we were at this Pizza Hut, saying that, or asking me that, do you you wish you would have stayed that color, huh? I I was like in ninth grade. I had to have been in eighth or ninth grade because we were about to move back to the states. How old are you in ninth grade? That's how old I was. I remember her asking me that question. That was the first time I ever heard something like colorism related. It was confusing to me. I was I don't remember responding to the question. I don't remember what I responded with, but that was kind of my first ideal of it. And mind you, up until this point, when we're in Okinawa, Japan, and I'm in ninth grade, I had lived on nothing but military bases or the suburbs. So majority white neighborhoods up until that point. But what had happened was when we moved from Japan to the States when I was in ninth grade, we didn't have a house ready yet so we had to stay at my grandparents which they live in the hood they live in a majority black hood and i am not used to the hood i didn't i don't know nothing about it but we're coming here so it's like a culture shock for me i like when i say i'm a suburb black girl like i used to listen to avril lavigne and jojo and a mixture of black and white music. I was very diverse in my music. I didn't care. Tokyo Hotel. All my, I'm trying to think of all my white artists that I love. Sam Smith. Like, Well, back then, Sam Smith wasn't around. But basically, I listened to black, white, whatever. I didn't care. But coming to the hood for the first time, it was a thing. People only listened to like hip-hop rap. If you did listen to anything else, you were corny. And so I used to have to act hood to fit in. That's when I made my last video about that. One of my last videos about that. This was kind of when I started to code switch because I wanted to, I wasn't fitting in. People used to call me at that school I went to in my grandma's neighborhood, which is in the hood. And there was mostly nothing but black. It was the minorities were the white people. Let's just say that. There was like maybe 10 of them at this school if that and they used to call me japan as a name <laughs> so i was in ninth grade because i was still trying to finish ninth grade from japan so i had to finish school over there in the states at my grandma's neighborhood so yeah keeping track right so i'm finishing ninth grade in the hood and that just came from like a whole diversity school on base so it's like a real culture shock for me but i remember that that was my first experience with pretty privilege realizing that my phenotype is different from everybody else's my my grandma that's when colorism kind of came more to me my attention like my grandma used to always call me light skin and she used to say i'm light skin i don't need to wear makeup because that's when i started playing with makeup a little more because i was entering high school i wanted to look cute like, I had a whole level up from between 8th grade and ninth grade. Like, I was working out, I was trying to get in shape and look good for high school. And so I liked to play with makeup. And that was my kind of first times playing with makeup or whatever. So my pretty privilege, like, I was already pretty. But when I started experimenting with makeup, it was a wrap. But this is when I also started getting more issues with my mom. Because my mom, because I got a lot of male attention around this time. Because my phenotype, I'll put a picture of my phenotype on the screen. And imagine being this phenotype going in the South and having like a white girl, what they call a white girl accent, and being in the hood. The girls, like I didn't really, I made like two girlfriends and they were cool. But the other friends that I would make would end up stabbing me in the back by trying to get with a boyfriend that I was dating at that 
at school. Like she ended up sleeping with him behind my back. I felt like he only wanted to be my friend to sabotage me for real. So I, it was hard for me to make friends there. So I used to try to code switch to try to fit in with people. But I didn't know myself yet at this time. I really didn't know myself. So I would code switch a lot. And it was just a different like colorism and all of that started to come. Like people called me light skin like it was a name. And I wasn't used to this. I because where I come from, I'm the more darker one because I grew up around mostly white people and Asian people. So I was always the dark the black girl. But coming to the hood now I'm on the opposite end. Like I'm now the lightest one. One of the lightest ones. And so it just I got a different treatment from people in the hood. Black people. I can't I say black people in the hood to make the distinction because black people in the suburbs don't talk about colors like this. I grew up with them too. And colorism is different in the hood than it is in the suburbs. It just is based off of my experiences. Cause I grew up in a lot of different areas. People really in the black community really pedestalize whiter skin people. If y'all know that one story time I told where my it was like my third day of school, it was Valentine's Day. And I remember walking into the auditorium because the auditorium is where we will all meet before the bell rings to go to class. Because, you know, the place where we can all gather in the morning before the first bell rang like where y'all would linger before the bell rang that's kind of where we lingered like the auditorium and so i remember walking in there with my new ass my pretty because i had makeup on and everything i had leveled up from when i was overseas remember so i was looking cute you know and i remember everybody staring at me in the auditorium i felt like like it was something out of a movie and then i remember one guy coming up to me this was valentine's day by the way i remember one guy coming up to me when i eventually sat down and i wanted to sit next to my cousin but i noticed my cousin was acting kind of funny towards me so i just kind of sat to myself across from her like she's a dark she's darker she's dark skin um, for context me and her never had an issue, but I just felt like she felt some type of way about, I don't know, it was just weird how she didn't want me to, she didn't sit with me, because she knew I was new to the school and everything, but anyway, I remember one guy coming up to me and giving me a, a Valentine's Day present, I was like, I've only been here this school three days, how do you even know to give me a present, but I appreciate it, thank you, and then somebody else came up with a present. And then somebody else came up with a present. And then one of the last guys that came up to give me a present was this big ass teddy bear, like this, like like life, like life size teddy bear. Mind you, this is the beginning of school. The first bell hasn't rang yet. I'm like, how am I gonna carry all of this stuff? And so I had to have, I had to have one of my teachers hold it for me till we got out of school. And when school let out and my mom came to pick me up and she saw all the presents I had, she started to feel some type of way about me. I noticed she got real different and saucy. Like, you know how when somebody's energy changes? And this is when I started to notice that she would treat me different and start calling me fast more often than not. Like, she would always consider me fast at this point. Mind you, I can't make female friends, so I na naturally gravitate towards guy friends. And... It was never nothing like that, but, you know, I got looked at as fast, even though I'm not doing anything. I mind you, I'm a virgin and everything, but I didn't lose my virginity long after, two years later, after this, I think two or three years later, I was a good Christian girl, like, I really, I was a church girl, I was a pastor's kid, and I really wanted to follow God, so I made sure I stayed, you know, I was a good, clean girl, but my mom looked at me like I was fast. Like, she's projecting on some of these stuff. And I remember one day being sick, throwing up. Because I was just sick, but she thought I was pregnant automatically. Assuming that I was pregnant, I was like, but yeah, y'all. 
that experience at that school, that, that's when I started doing my research on colorism. And on YouTube was kind of new at the time, so I would look up little videos on YouTube of colorism. And over the years, I just start watching people who would talk about it. Like, one of the first people I remember was Sergeant Willie P. Mitch. Sergeant Willie P. if I remember him. So to my he would talk about those things. I didn't see Rashida. She said she was around at the time, but I never saw Rashida up until like three or four years ago. But you know, ever since that school, like when I was in ninth grade at my grandma's house neighborhood school, ever since then it was like I don't know. now colorism.